Godzilla versus Kong versus everybody. Monarch is Shield, while Apex is Hydra, and more. This is my review of the 2021 film Godzilla vs. Kong. A D N. It's headphones nail. What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's going to be the 2021 film Godzilla vs. Kong. So this is going to have a couple, or probably the biggest spoiler of the film, which takes place in the third act of the film, but is revealed in the second act, so going into it I was not expecting to see that, so that's why I'm giving the spoiler warning up front, so you guys know that I am going to spoil the biggest part of the film. So this film acts as a sequel to the last review that I did, notably for the 2014 Godzilla film, 2017's Kong Skull Island, and 2019's um, Godzilla King of the Monsters. So this film acts as a continuity just because when you watch the intro to the film, you get a summary of all the monsters that Godzilla killed. So like, for example, Mothra, uh, Ghidorah and all of the rest and then I want to say they kind of I, or at least I didn't see it so I'll assume that they also make note of <clears throat> what we saw in the Godzilla film or in the King Kong film so um, essentially all the films have been leading to this showdown between the two titans um, so by the time of this film it's been a few years um, Millie Bobby Brown's character has grown up um, I'm starting with her just because the potential for her character started off so well but it kind of took a back burner just because it felt like they spent more time with the uh, young um, girl who could not talk and her relationship with Kong and not enough time with Millie Bobby Brown's character and Godzilla so I kind of was hoping that they or basically because I read about this after I was kind of hoping that they would have addressed that a little little bit more but um, granted the last few films didn't or the last film at least showed her a, a, a affinity for Godzilla but they didn't really take it anything take it beyond that um, aside from her having a more intimate knowledge of Godzilla's abilities and things like that so that was fine but it felt like they could have included um, more of a story arc on her or more character development on her um, and it kind of, or when you watch the film or see the film length for this film, it is shorter than the other films. So it would have been nice to see, or it would have been nice to have more character development on her side as far as why Godzilla is good rather than just telling her dad about it. So overall from there, it's things, the film, you would think it takes a downturn, but overall it, the film actually turns into a uh, good sequel in that we have a battle between the two titans to um, sh basically have the title of the film and you would think that it ends there but that's when you realize you're only about halfway through the film so you would expect a rematch between Kong and Godzilla but we learn in the second act of the film that the bad guys Apex have been developing their own um, mechanical monster to sum up all the various titans and we learned that it's in the form of Mecha Godzilla. so the revelation here was particular uh, of particular note just because of um, that connection so I really didn't see that coming but what they did was very well done um, so we know that we're setting up for a final battle somehow between Godzilla, Kong, and Mecha Godzilla. So that leads us into the final battle where we do have Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla, or we have the rematch between Godzilla and King Kong. Where in the first battle, uh, Godzilla had the upper hand, mostly because um, Godzilla or Kong was sedated and um, not on his game. The second one, we have Kong taking over just because he has his battle axe. Because as we learn in the Hollow Earth, his ancestors had been part of that civilization and had been the rulers. Um, we then have a battle between, and it kind of goes back and forth, but I think we, then we had the battle between 
Godzilla and Mechagodzilla, where Godzilla is <clears throat> proving to be unable to defeat his nemesis. And then we have Godzilla coming in to save the day. He helps defeat Mechagodzilla, and we round out the film as far as the two Titans under basically not necessarily respecting each other, but going in their separate ways that they can be the two alpha males or the alpha titans on the planet um and the thing that i liked throughout this film was that we had the little girl who'd been living in living on skull island continuing to talk to godzilla because they had each other's trust to um continue to work with kong to help or help the humans and kong work together to ultimately um take down mecha godzilla because they learn or because they originally think that godzilla is the nemesis and causing the destruction for no reason that he's the villain but it turns out he's not and kong was swayed because of the girl telling him that godzilla's not the um villain mecha godzilla is so all of that tied together very well so if i was to grade this film i would probably give it about a grade of a 90 to 92 to 95 percent just in that not quite an a minus but not quite an a range mostly because it was a good film the two hours or the hour and 53 minutes went by really fast i enjoyed the various chapters i liked the friend and the podcast guy who were who ultimately teamed up with millie bobby brown to, to help take down apex and all that but i am deducting points because while millie bobby brown's character started off well they kind of veered off onto the tangent with the other two characters and it became turned into an episode of stranger things when they were going into the underground russian uh, laboratory so that that was a weird i mean that was kind of, kind of up in her wheelhouse of acting but it was a weird right turn to take as far as character development so i kind of was hoping that we would have had more or we would have had her show up to work with Godzilla or find some, figure out some way to communicate with him that uh, during his the second fight with Kong that Kong is not the actual villain it's Mecha Godzilla and have that transition so things like, so that that kind of is why it um, takes away from the movie for me but the potential was there but that's um, neither here nor there maybe there's a deleted scene that'll fix that and not saying that there needs to be a director's cut of the film but I'm hoping that maybe there's some deleted scenes that were cut maybe because of timing or the full the, they couldn't quite fill the fit the flow of those scenes into the movie and that's why they were cut so that's actually all there is for this particular review so this movie actually now makes me want to go back and watch the Godzilla vs Kong film and Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla films to see how they hold up and see kind of how they compare between those original films and this film see if there's any connections or maybe if they they were trying to draw some inspiration in this film from the original films then combine the two into one so that's all there is for this particular review so as i mentioned i'm probably going to give those two films a watch as long as they're streaming on hbo then i will give them a watch if they're not then i'll pass on that um and as far as an upcoming review um, before i jump into the predator franchise and mortal kombat um, the Star Wars Clone Wars 2D micro series is now streaming on um, Disney Plus. This is the original Clone Wars series that was released before the Star Wars Clone Wars series, directed by Dave Filoni. So I actually kind of enjoyed those. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the animation style at the time, but I did enjoy the stories that they presented. So I'm going to give those a watch. They're in two approximately hour, just over an hour long episodes instead of the micro episodes they were when they first released. So um, I'm going to give those a watch and that'll be the next review up on the site. Um, so look out for that as well. And so after the Star Wars Clone Wars rewatch, Predator, the Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and Godzilla vs. Kong films, um, there will I forget if I said Mortal Kombat in the mix of that and then Mortal Kombat and then after that it'll probably be the Game of Thrones series so look out for all of that com content coming soon and of course um, as an update to I might have mentioned it in the last episode but you can now visit the website at headphonesneal.reviews for a more simplified in my opinion site and 
um, easier access to the various content and ways to get the show. So the main category, subscription, support, and all of that in uh, hopefully easier to use site. All the existing links will still are still the same as far as being at, at PatelN01.com. So um, you can visit that site as well. Everything is cross or everything will eventually be cross-linked. But right now, if you can visit or easily visit HeadphonesNeil.reviews for access to that content, recent posts, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can find me on Twitter for feedback, um, um, comments, suggestions, and things like that. Um, and updates or maybe a correction, something I might have gotten wrong or something I might have missed um, by visiting uh, Twitter at PatelN01. Pa the Patreon is patreon.com slash PatelN01 for um, earlier access to upcoming content and bonus content and all that good stuff. And the one thing to round out this review is that when you watch the film, you realize that Monarch was not actually the bad guys, they were the good guys. As part of the secret, as far as secret agencies go, so comparing it to Marvel or continuing the Marvel comparison with my last review, Monarch is kind of like Shield, and um, in this film, Apex, I think Apex Industries basically turns out to be a variation of Hydra, in that they were they're doing some bad stuff. They, I don't know that Hydra, at least in the films, created anything bad, but they were the um, downfall of Shield internally and. That's kind of what we see here where Apex, or the actions of Apex are ultimately reflected on Monarch and the public doesn't really understand the difference because they don't know the, either of the two agencies. So with that in mind, you kind of have that connection. And of course, aside from the Marvel connection, we have the Stranger Things connection, so you have that. So that's kind of why this film generally worked is just that they, they generally had a good uh, film going on for the most part everything flowed well nicely they had a good connection to the prior films and it doesn't really look or as far as I could tell from my perspective watching the watching them as a whole nothing really was missed there might have been little things here and there but nothing that I could tell while watching them so that's all there is for this review so as I mentioned you have all the various places to reach out to me but it can all be found on the website at headphonesnail.reviews but thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time